Log Talk Radio. One day, when the glory comes, it will be out, it will be out. Oh, one day, when the war is won, we will be sure. the heavens, no man, no weapon, formed against death, glory is destined, everyday women and men become legends, sins that go against our skin become blessings, the movement is a rhythm to us, freedom is like religion to us, justice is juxtaposition in us, justice for all just ain't specific enough, one son died, the spirit is revisiting us, true and living, living in us, resistance is us, that's why Rosa sat on the bus. That's why we walk through Ferguson with our hands up. When it go down, we woman and man up. They say stay down and we stand up. Shots be on the ground, the camera panned up. King pointed to the mountaintop and we ran up. One day, when the glory comes, it will be out. It will be out. Oh, one day, when the war is won. Woman and child, even Jesus got his crown in front of a crowd. They march with the torch, we gon' run with it now. Never look back, we done gone hundreds of miles from dark roads, heroes to become a hero. Facing the league of justice, his power was the people. Enemy is lethal, a king became regal. Saw the face of Jim Crow under a bald ego. The biggest weapon is to stay peaceful. We sing, our music is the cuts that we bleed through. Somewhere in the dream, we had an epiphany. Now we right the wrongs in history. No one can win a war individually. It takes the wisdom of the elders and young people's energy. Welcome to the story we call victory. The coming of the Lord. My eyes have seen the glory. One day, when the glory comes, it will be out. It will be out. Oh, one day. Shalom 
to Israel, who is blind, cannot see, cannot hear, and still falling and worshiping after false idols. Shalom to the little boys and girls that need to be reared up into the word so they can see a glorious day. To all my brothers and sisters, I hope that um, on this fifth day of the week, as we are in the land of our captivity, the Gentiles call Thursday, that you understand that there's only one purpose for you while you're alive. There's only one purpose is to serve the Most High, to give all diligence to help create and build and establish this kingdom. So when our Father comes with his Son glory, that we can be um, seen worthy in his sight to way. Um, at this time, we're going to go to our Father in prayer. Um, if you want to pray with me, men, of course, we will have our heads uncovered. Women, you would have your heads covered. We will be facing, as we say, east, but we'll be facing towards Jerusalem where the new, holy, set-apart city will come down with the commandments with it in glory. So we'll be facing that way. As our Father tells us how to pray, uh, as Josiah tells us how to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. But give us this day our daily bread. Father, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not from temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because you have all the power, all the righteousness, all the goodness forever. We pray that our spirit is poured upon us, that um, we will walk in your statutes, that your spirit will lead us to all truth, that we will learn how to give all diligence to add to our faith, give all diligence to add to the things that we see in righteousness, the words that we hear in righteousness. We pray all this in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, we're going to talk about Avahaya. We're going to talk about the spirit so we can learn how to recognize the spirit, deal with spirits, and learn how to walk in the spirit. We know um, in Genesis, when we were first created, formed out the dust, that Father told the Son how to create all things, taught him all the words and all the things that he needed to say, how to create the sun, the moon, the seas, the earth every animal, and what he did was breathe his spirit into us. And at this time, due to the fact that even the ones who are trying to walk in the truth, we ignore different parts of what he blew into us. We have the abilities to do wondrous, miraculous things. That spirit that he blew into us Let's understand what long-suffering is, what patience is, what faith is, what love is, strength, being wide awake and be able to see, be able to hear those gifts from the Spirit. It's what he blew into us. So first thing we're going to do is learn how to recognize spirits because there are clean and unclean spirits. As you'll hear different times, godly and ungodly spirits. Spirit of infirmity. Spirit of fear. Spirit of sorrowfulness. Blind spirit. Spirit of slumber. 
another spirit, spirit of false doctrines, spirit of deviations, seducing spirits, spirits of jealousy, proud spirit, a haughty spirit, burning spirit, familiar spirit, the spirit of Egypt, spirit of the world. There's also the spirit of meekness, spirit of the poor, spirit of wisdom, the spirit from your father, the Holy Spirit, excellent spirit, a patient spirit, an eternal spirit, a meek and quiet spirit, a spirit of a ruler, spirit of a higher, spirit of prophecy, spirit of judgment, a contrary spirit, a spirit of knowledge, a good spirit, a spirit of Elijah, a new spirit, a spirit of grace and supplication, spirit of living, all these different spirits that I said by name are spirits that you can find in the Word. The spirits that the Father made sure that we knew, he talked about them, read them down for our knowledge and our understanding so we can learn how to deal with them, recognize them, but most importantly, if we want to be faithful, learn how to walk with the spirit of righteousness so we have only one spirit, the same spirit that Yeshua had, the same spirit that the Father, the Most High, has given to us. So we're going to look at some of these words so we can learn how to recognize spirits. We're going to look at unclean spirits first. Then you go to the Gospel, Luke, chapter 13. And we're going to do verses 11 through 13. Again, that's Luke, chapter 13, 11 through 13. And it says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. And when Yeshua, and when Yeshua, Jesus, remember, his name should be the commandments. We look back to Exodus, and I'll be using Yeshua, just meaning salvation. We say, Ahaya, Shah, Ahaya, but what he taught us there, I am that I am, or I will be who I will be. And again, both of those different names that I used were from the Hebrew tongue, but we got to understand that our Father created all language. So we're going back to number 12, Luke number 12, and when Yeshua saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, that are loose from thine infirmity. And he laid hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified Ahia. So right there he says there's a spirit of infirmity. That spirit of infirmity took hold of that woman. She was bound to it for 18 years, a little bit longer from the time that someone was born to the time they get passed out of high school. And Yeshia laid hands on her, and she was made straight, able to go. Now, we could see that a spirit of infirmity around so many people. Some of the obese that can't get up, lay around, have that spirit amongst them. Some of those people that we call lazy, they don't want to go to work, they just want to sit at home, get high. They have that spirit amongst them. Some people, they can see other people suffering, won't lift their hand, won't bend the knee to help out. We can see that spirit. We have to know that's a spirit that's taking hold of it. We got to understand that the only thing that will get people out of that spirit will be the word. But we want to learn how to recognize spirits that got hold of loved ones, people that we know, people we're trying to teach. 
And that's just one spirit we see in the gospel. We're going to go down to um, Mark, staying in the gospel. We're going to look at the gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 23 to 29. Yeshia said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway, the father, Abba, and straightway, Abba, the word father for Hebrew, of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thy mind unbelief. So just starting right there, Shias tells you if he believes, and that goes for the faithful as the unfaithful, the learned and the unlearned. That goes for if you're trying to learn how to walk in the spirit, first got to do what he's talking about. You got to believe. And we go down to verse 25. When Yeshia saw that the people came running together, he would brute the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee. Come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent in him, sore, and came out of him. And he was one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Yeshai took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he rose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So Yeshua tells us you got to believe in, in this one person had had unbelief but wanted to believe. And with the power, with the shyest power, cast out a dumb. And you can also see the disciples seeing that the, the spirit at work, recognizing a deaf and dumb spirit. And it's the same thing that Nowadays, you see so many brothers that call themselves in the truth, say they know the truth, reading scripture after scripture after scripture, have the same question the disciples had. Why can't we cast out that same spirit the same way? And they ask them that privately. And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So if you're trying to reach the Holy Spirit, again, another word instead of the English tongue, the Hebrew tongue, Ruach Kodesh. If you're trying to reach that, you must pray. You must fast. It must be a part of your life. It's not one of those things you do just at meal time. It's not one of those things you do every blue moon. It must be a constant part of your life. Me talking to you right now, brothers that I know I need to pray more with, with my family I need to pray more with, by myself, I'm not doing anything. I need to pray more. Prayer and fasting. Believe that that's going to work. And you'll see the Spirit reside in it. So we can see a spirit of infirmity, a spirit that makes people dumb, a spirit that makes people can't hear. We walk around all the time and we're talking to quote unquote Christians. We say we don't understand why they don't get it. What's wrong? That's the spirit of dumbness. 
the spirit that makes them deaf. And we think that just because they're responding to the words out of our mouth, they now have understanding or they have knowledge, but they, they're walking around still in ignorance. So there's a spirit of dumbness. So we got to understand a part of reaching them and understanding how to reach them is for us to stay in prayer, for us to stay fast, and pass that knowledge on so they can get all the world and all that other crap out. So if they say they don't understand, pray and fast over it, brother. Pray and fast over it, sister. Because it's the spirit that keeps you dumb. You have to learn how to identify, recognize these spirits so we can defeat them with the same power that Yeshua had. Now we're in Romans. Chapter 11, verse 8. According as it was written, I have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear. Unto this day, as it was written back in the law, we can see in um, First Kings when he gave them a He'll give them a lying spirit. The spirit of slumber. That means you're still asleep. We have the walking dead walking around. We have those that are supposed to be awake, still in their bed. Eyes they should not see. He's going to have the Father in all his glory. He says in Matthew 12, for he only gave us one sign that he spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. You could put a calendar up in front of every person that goes to a church on Sunday and point out that that's not three days and three nights. What the Roman Catholic Church is teaching you, what the Antichrist is teaching you, what that spirit is showing you, does not add up with the words that the Father's already taught you. You can point it out to show them, and they still won't see, still will be blind. And that's the spirit, the spirit of slumber, the spirit that won't let them see. We have to be able to recognize these spirits, call these spirits out, rebuke these spirits as we're talking to them. Those we're trying to reach. And of course, they'll get upset. But again, if you tell them, I'm looking at this, you're looking at this, but you still can't see it, that's the spirit that's controlling you, so you can't see it. That's the spirit that wants you to remain in dark. They're the slumber. We're going to keep moving on so we can learn how to recognize and deal with spirits. We're going to look at 1 John chapter 4. We're going to do 1 through 6. That's the verses we're looking at. 1 John, chapter 4, 1 through 6. And it goes, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits where they are of. So you should be able to try the spirits that you see. You should be able to see if they're giving out good fruit or bad fruit. You should be able to see if those spirits are going to lead you and to all truth, that those spirits are going to cause you to work for the kingdom. You should be able to see if those spirits are moving you into a direction that the word has pushed you into. You're supposed to try those spirits. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of Ahia, Yeshia, Hamashiach, it's come in the flesh is of a higher. So it says every spirit, every spirit that comes from and that confesses that the Christ is in the flesh is from a higher. But we can look at some people and they say, you know, Joel Osteen. Um, Crofello Dollar, 
I'm just saying some popular people because they're on TV and stuff, but they confess that Christ came in the flesh, died on a cross. But this goes right here. It says, Hereby we know ye that the spirit of Ahia, every spirit that confesses that the Christ has come in the flesh is of Ahia. So there's no debating that part. Even Satan, that spirit, when he talked to Eve, he taught her truth with lies. So when we're talking to brothers and sisters and we're talking to people in the faith, there will be people that will mix up truth and they'll also mix it up with a lie. That's why he tells you you have to test those spirits. Eventually, those spirits will let you know that they're only from a higher. So you have to be able to know and recognize all manner of truth, not just some, not just part, but all truth. The only way you can be able to get to all truth is, one, being diligent in your own studies, studying to show yourself approved, being a workman, be your mind focused on the prize, your inheritance. Then you have to learn how to pray, fast, stay in the spirit. So when those seducing spirits do come to lead you astray or lead the ones you love astray, you can recognize them and deal with them. But we're still in... First John chapter 4, now we're in verse number 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Yeshua is Christ, not of a height. And that is that spirit of the Antichrist. Whoever ye have heard that it shall come, and even now already is in the world. And every spirit that confesses not that Yeshua is Christ, that the Christ is coming in the flesh, is not of a height. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. So that spirit we can see that's in the world right now, we have so many people that first say that um, of different um, denominations, different faiths, different. First, there is. Some say there's no Ohio. There's no God. Big bang there. Then you have some that said that he is just a prophet. A prophet just like the rest, just a man. Then you got some, which a lot of the Christian doctrine is built off of. That says, okay, he came. He died. Pope will say, now he's the victor. He's the one that has all the power and authority here on this earth. So we got to understand that's the spirit of the Antichrist. That's the spirit that wants to oppose what Christ is. And if you have no idea what Christ is, he's life. So the spirit of the Antichrist is going to cause you death. It's going to cause you to have short years on this planet. And that spirit was in the world back when they were writing these words. We're thousands of years later. And there's nothing new under the sun for us. We're learning as we go by, so we see things new with brand new babe's eyes sometimes. But we got to understand. And that spirit of the Antichrist has been working on us, been working on this doctrine, been working on traditions of men, leading us false, leading us astray for a long time. So unless you know this word, and you're praying, and you're staying away from the corruption that this world will put inside your temple by fasting, it's going to be hard to recognize the spirit of the Antichrist because it's going to come in so many different forms. 1 John 4, we have verse number 4. Ye are of a higher, 
little children and have overcome them. Greater is that that is in you than in that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are of Ahaya. We are of Ahaya Shahaya. We are of the most high. We are of the creator. He that knows Ahaya hears us. He that is not of Ahaya hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So there's a spirit of truth. It's a spirit of error. Knowing the word is true. Psalms 119, 142. Thy law is truth. So the spirit of the Antichrist tell you there is no more law. That means there is no more truth. That's the Antichrist spirit coming out. That's the spirit of error. That's the spirit of false doctrine. Exodus chapter 31. He said he gave his Sabbath day for us as a perpetual covenant from generation to generation for the children of Israel. But so many in this land of captivity, in this country that's like Egypt, Babylon, would tell you there is no more Sabbath day. This country who made sodomy, sodomy legal, the abomination of unholy marriage legal, also made in 1961 the worship of sun worship, Sunday legal, spirit of error. It's all around you. You must know the spirit of truth. Thy law is truth. Paul, the one they twist his words up, he says, don't you know the law is spiritual? Don't you know the law has dominion over you your whole life? That's Romans chapter 7. The things I wish I don't do, I do do. You must know the law is spiritual. You must know what is true. Creative Antichrist is nothing to play with. As they say, is no joke. So unless you're walking in those, unless you know how to pray, unless you know how to fast, learn how to shun the ways of the world away, you'll be infected with this world and spirit of blindness. Infected with the spirit of dumbness. Infected with the spirit of infirmity. When me and my brother V started this walk, it was him, another one, with a zeal, ready to go. Because of getting baptized into the word, a spirit of infirmity came across, infected. They want you not to work. We have to identify these things. We have to understand that the Most High first will never make you labor in vain, but most importantly will never have you be idle, will never have you just stand by. He will never have you stay in the same state. That's the spirit of slumber. We're going to Exodus chapter 23, verse 1. Thou shalt not raise a false report, put thine thine hand with the wicked to be the unrighteous witness. So, we wouldn't give a report. We wouldn't be an unrighteous witness. We wouldn't add to the word. We wouldn't take away from the word. 
The only report we can give could be the one that's true, and that's the spirit there. So when we make up different things in the word, elevate ourselves. The spirit of pride. Trying to let people know that this is what I know. This is what I can see. I can tell you straight up, upward, downward, side, and back. I don't know everything. The Father doesn't want me to know everything. His ways are different from my ways. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. I can't break it down to you for everything. But I can tell you that we can study together. We can go on this word and righteousness. We can reason with each other out of the scriptures. That's what I do know. I don't have to know everything. I don't even have to know everything that comes up, come towards tomorrow. Because when it's time for me to know, he's going to give me the right spirit and let me bear that fruit out. Aha, there it is. As they used to say, whoop, there it is. The Father will let me know these things. I don't have to worry about those things. As long as I'm with the Father, inside the Father, he's going to give me comfort. He's going to keep me shielded. He's going to put the whole armor on me. I don't have to worry. The children of Israel, they were lost. They were in the captivity of Egypt under a false doctrine, under false prophets, under an unrighteous government. He parted the seas. He freed them, gave them his word, gave them his commandments, gave them his feast days, his times, his laws. They didn't have to do or want for nothing. Gave them manna out of the sky. But yet nowadays, we don't believe when he comes back that he's going to dry up the land, the seas, part seven for us so we can get back to the land that we need to. He got this under control. Creator that created the seas that he can't uncreate the sea for me. I understand men don't understand how a part of the ocean, because if they did, they wouldn't have done it already. But the highest told you he already has. I don't have to worry. If he comes back on the trumpets of this year, I feel fine. If he wants me to die in this land of my captivity, I feel fine. If he's going to take me out of my land and captivity with the wings of an eagle, I'm good with that. There is no false doctrine there. Whatever he chooses is his will be done. But there's many false reports out here. And they come from people and men of Israel. False doctrine. Matthew chapter 16, verse 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. We are of Ahia. He that knoweth Ahia hears us. He that is not of the highest here is not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Chapter 16, just verse 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Going back to um, Matthew 16, when he's talking to the disciples, at first they thought he was talking about bread, but he was talking about the doctrine of those that called themselves Israel, those that said they kept the Sabbath, those that said they kept the commandments. I read you another scripture. It says, if you are from a higher, you know, you know him, you know the spirit of truth, you can identify the spirit of error. The, the Sadducees and the Pharisees have a spirit of error, tells me, 
that Abraham was the father of many nations. Jacob, he started off the nation of Israel. We have so many different nationalities. We are nations. We have Hispanic, Mexican. We have Indian. We have Israel. We have the Car- Swazi Jews or Cars Jews. Imposters. We have Russians. Chinamen. They trace their lineage down to what? Some of them being Gentiles. Some of them being Semites. We have other brothers and sisters that are Hamites. But there's only one tribe of Israel. Only one. And it's not made up of a multitude of nations. You've got to understand the spirit of error. You got to understand. Tell you something is it's just the way it is. I don't have to. I don't have to figure it out any different way. If he told me that he scattered the tribe of Judah to the four winds, that's what he did to Judah. But we're so interested in trying to see the whole glory of Yeshia before he comes back and show it. We want to know everything. We will put the cart before the horse. You just learn how to be righteous. You just learn how to keep these commandments, these laws and statutes. You learn how to pray. You learn how to fast. And he will lead you into all truth. All right. We're in Isaiah chapter 19, verse 3. Now we're going to start looking at the spirit that's in these worlds, in these nations. Isaiah chapter 19, verse 3. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst of thereof. And I will destroy the counsel thereof. And they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to wizards. This is going out to a nation. Again, America. You look at the note that has written you. If you understand what note I'm talking about, just pull out your dollar bill. Where it has the eye and the pyramids. And it says that spirit of Egypt and Isaiah 19 will fail in the midst of thereof. So that spirit of Egypt is in the midst of us. When you walk around, that spirit is around us. Just like it's two, three of our brothers that are righteousness. Ahia is in our midst. And we're able to whip the butt of the spirit of Egypt. But that spirit is in the midst of us. That spirit's on YouTube. That spirit's fools. That spirit is in the church houses. That spirit is the government of the United States. A familiar spirit. The spirit of wizardry. The spirit of charmers. The spirit of idolatry. That's what it's telling you in Isaiah 19. If your temple is sick, if your temple has infirmity to it, they'll give you psychology, some medication, some pharmacology, pharmacia. And after you get that stuff, the other spirits will tell you to wrap a cross around your neck, kiss on it, pray to it. And you'll seek those wizards and witchcrafts will lead you to a different word. The so to try and train you to keep you to keep your temple holy and clean, to stay away from those things that twist your mind, to keep you in slumber, to keep you in infirmity, to keep you dumb. 
It'll tell you to take it two times a day. And after two months, three months, come back and see me. So we need to up your dosage. Give you some more of these pills. Get that spirit a little bit further in you. And then after you hooked, after this spirit of Egypt has got you completely in its roles and everything that it has, takes the carpet from underneath your legs, pull back your prescription, fiending, looking for your next fix. Instead of for you finding the word of truth, this government has a spirit of error. So, understand this government has a spirit and it's in the midst of you. And it's leading you away from righteousness. Again, we have 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now ye have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of a highest, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of a higher. Now you've got to understand, like you said in Isaiah, there's a spirit of Egypt that's in the midst of it. And as we read earlier, that spirit was already in the world back then when they were writing that book. So receive not the spirit of the world. Keep yourself separate from these things. Keep yourself separate from those that are teaching false doctrines. Keeping those customs. Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, all these pagan rituals and customs. Stay away from those spirits. Got you hustling dollar dollar bill, y'all. Stay away from those spirits that want to have you look at everything that's half naked on the TV. Stay away from those spirits, those haughty spirits that tell you they got everything figured out. That no longer you need to come to a higher for your information. No longer you need to seek a shia in the gospel. They got it figured. Just, just tune on in. We'll break it down for you. You got to stay away from those spirits. So we want to get a little better understanding of the word talking about a spirit of a nation that's unholy. A spirit of a nation that's unrighteous. What better place to find that than into the word itself? So we're going to turn to Leviticus chapter 18. So all those things we need to get Let's get understanding. For all those things we need to get, let's get some knowledge. The Father gave us his word as a spirit, an undeniable spirit that will lead you into all truth, that will keep you healthy, keep you safe. As my brother V will say, it's the blueprint for life. That's what that spirit is. But they say the spirit of Egypt is in the midst of us. All these other spirits, Egypt is cultivating, helping you grow, making it stronger to keep you deaf, blind, dumb, and lazy. So to get that understanding that we need, we're going to go to Leviticus 18. We're going to the law, the Torah the first five books of Moses, the books that were written until the end of time, books that were written that you'll see coming back down from the heavens for New Jerusalem where we set up this holy mountain for us again, the law. Leviticus 18, and it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. So right there, Moses speaking to the children of Israel, telling them, I am. 
right there and tell you, I am Ahaya Shah Ahaya. Tyler, you want to give me? I am the creator. I am the day and night. I am judgment. I am righteousness. I am the everlasting power. But if you want to know me by name, call me a higher. 18, Leviticus chapter 3, and it reads, after the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein we dealt, wherein we dwelt, excuse me, shall we not do. And after the doings of the land of the Canaan, whether I bring you, shall ye not do, neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. So after doing the lands of Egypt, after you came out all that paganism, that idolatry that he pulled you out of, putting you over there by the land of Canaan, and don't do after them. Don't do what they did to their land. Don't walk in the way they do. Don't walk in their ordinance. Don't keep their commandments and their judgments. Verse number four. He said, you should do my judgments and keep my ordinance to walk therein. I am Ahia, Ashar Ahia. So while we're in the land of our captivity, while we're in America, just like they had to do when they were in the land of Canaan, you should keep his judgments, you should keep his statutes, you should keep his ordinances. That's what it says. Verse number five. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother. Shall I not uncover she is thy mother, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. See, your father's nakedness is your mother. Your mother's nakedness is your father. So when they talk about him uncovering Noah's um, nakedness, it wasn't he was sleeping with him. He messed around with his mama. So in that land of Canaan, they were willing to do these different things. But we won't put to have nothing to do with it. If you're in this land of America, they will show you that filth, less than right, incest, abominations, husbands cheating on wives, wives cheating on husbands throughout the whole thing. You're watching on your TV invading your thoughts and your mind. It's a spirit coming in. Verse number eight, the nakedness of thy father, father's wife, so thou not uncovered, is thy father's nakedness. Number nine, the nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or the daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even thy nakedness, they shall not uncover. The nakedness of thy son's daughter, or thy daughter's daughter, even thy nakedness, thou shalt not uncover. The bears is thine own nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father. She is thy sister. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister, father's nearest kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, so she is thy mother's nearest kinsman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thine aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Verse number 16. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of, of a woman, her daughter. Thou shalt take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. Without her Kinsman, maybe she'll not take a wife to her sister to vex her to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. I thought I should not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. So even right there, 
A verse number 19, if thou not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness, as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. But again, in this world, in this country, all filth is okay. You go to your ministers and your churches that worship on Sunday, none of this stuff is ever going to be told to you. Country, this nation, every image you see is abomination given to you to put that spirit inside of you. Show you women of the street. Show you those prostituting themselves, men and women of light. Number 20, moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. Number 21, thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through thy fire to Molech. Neither thou shalt profane the name of thy Ahia. I am. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Verse 22. In the law, thou shalt not lie with mankind as womankind. It is an abomination. We started this chapter off because they were going to the land of Canaan. They said, don't keep your laws. Don't keep their ordinances. He was pointing out things that they were doing that you should not be doing. A wicked nation. The spirit of Egypt. He referenced Egypt before he started. America has the spirit of Egypt in all 50 states across all the land. It says mankind should live or lay with mankind. Mankind should lay with mankind just like there's a woman, and it's not abomination. That's what the law just passed and said. That's the spirit. It's the spirit that's gotten hold of us. It's in the midst of us. You should be able to see it. You should be able to see that spirit transforming men to try to look like women, wearing lipstick, high heels, putting on feminine garments. You should be able to see that spirit in women that cut their hair real short, be butch, take testosterone, try to shrink down their boobs and look like a man. You should be able to see that spirit changing the flesh an abomination corrupting the temple that Ahia has made and adorned that is perfect. He did not make any flaw in you. He did not make no flaw in mankind. He didn't make no flaw in womankind. He ain't no birth gene that's making you want to cut yourself and make you look like another person to add body parts in you. If you weren't born with a Johnson, you can't put an operation and give yourself a Johnson. That's an abomination. But the American government and plastic surgeon will tell you that's okay. If you're a man and a hire didn't give you boobs, you can't go get some boobs put on you. That's an abomination. You're distorting the temple that the most high is giving to you. We can see that spirit in the flesh taking hold of us people. We don't understand what a spirit is. They manifest themselves. All right, we're going to stay with the word. We stopped off at verse number 22. Now we at verse number 23, Leviticus chapter 20, excuse me, Leviticus 18, verse 24. Defile not yourselves in any of these things. For in all these, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. So only Israel knew these laws, and all these other nations are willing to do it. They're cast out. Number 25, and the land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity there upon it. And the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. Is this land defiled? Food we have vomited out, a corruption, a corruption to our temples, to our body. Do we still see that same judgment that he told us we would see on this nation that we live in? 
That's a spirit. We can see that spirit in our own foods now. Verse number 26. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation or any stranger that's surging, surging with you. Let me break it down. Verse number 26. You should keep my statutes, my judgments. You should not commit any of these abominations. Those are all abominations. But he points out the stranger to the Most High brought strangers out of Egypt, and they stayed with Israel, and they were grafted in. Cornelius was grafted in, a stranger, a white man, an Italian. I'm not going to be mad at another race, another nation, but I'm not going to tell a white man that he's Israel because he's not, not by the flesh, and that's what you got to understand. We're talking about the flesh. We're not talking about that spirit. We'll get into it later and we'll, pull, we'll bear that fruit out that I can be Israel by the flesh but have the spirit of a Gentile. I will always be Israel, the flesh, but I have the spirit of a Gentile. We'll bear that out, the fruit, out the word. But I'm Israel according to the flesh, just like Paul says. I'm the Hebrew Israelite according to the flesh. He wrapped Israel to jealousy. Strangers, a Mexican, a Hispanic man. He is not Israel according to the flesh. But he can be grafted in, be Israel. And he'll be my brother left, right, upside down, be keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. You are what your father is. Jacob was a black man. Had Israel with four different women. Every son that he created that came after that was considered a black man. They didn't create different nations. Without him. And any woman that took another man in from another nation and they had children, they became of that nation, of that man. But the man was inside of Israel, stayed Israel. They didn't become a different nation. It's only one nation. But understand what I'm saying. When he says the stranger, the surgeon among you, I don't care what other nationality you are. If you keep these laws, statutes, and commandments, you're grafted in. That's what makes you the spirit of Israel. So don't fall off of these doctrines for the 12 tribes chart. You this, you that, you this. Let the Father sort all that madness out. Let the Father keep his word. He's true to his word. He tells you to pray, fast on his statute, judgments, and commandments, and then you get your butt to work and help build up his kingdom so you can prove yourself to be worthy. You don't have to worry about what tribe you're from. You just worry about following the most high word. I tell you I'm Judah. I tell you I'm one of the, the, the tribe that got scattered. To the four winds, it makes me know that it makes me a hell of beings. It makes me know the difference of some keeping the law, statute, uh, or commandment. If I don't keep that Sabbath day, I'm gonna fall to the same destruction that Israel did in the wilderness. Commandments, praise, fast. All right, we're back in Leviticus 18, verse number 27. For all these abominations have the men of the land done which ye before you, and the land is defiled. So we're in America, just like they were in Canaan. These abominations we see in front of us, and the land is defiled. Yes, gay marriage is legal. It's an abomination. Yes, Sunday law is legal. That's an abomination. Yes, aborting a child is legal. It's an abomination. Yes, putting 
pharmacology, pharmaceuticals into your body. Yes, that's an abomination. Not keeping the dietary law. Yes, it's an abomination. The land is defiled because of it. Every fruit tree, every apple, 28, and the land spool not you out also when he defiled it. And it was spewed out the nations that were before you. For whatsoever shall come, any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them, shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore, therefore shall you keep mine ordinance. Who? Who ordinance do you keep? Therefore, you should keep Israel united in Christ's ordinance. Nope. Therefore, you should keep the gathering of Christ's church ordinances. Nope. Therefore, you should keep the Church of Christ's ordinance. Nope. Therefore, you should keep the Roman Catholic Church ordinances. No. There's only one ordinance. There's only one faith. There's only one baptism. Why, why do we always have to keep trying to give ourselves different names, different explanations? Israel's good enough. House of Jacob. House of Israel. Israel's good enough. It was good enough for the Father to make sure we knew it. It's good enough for us to keep it. Let somebody tell you they Israel. I don't care what camp they're from. You're supposed to be able to do what? Test those spirits. You can't test those spirits. Evidently, you're not in the spirit in the right way. You're not walking in all truth. I have so many different people from so many different camps and so many different backgrounds. Hey. I spend time with them. I can tell you what things they're saying is true and what things they're saying is false. That's not no thing for me. It's not because I'm some genius. I have the word sold down. No. The Father leads you into all truth. The Father will give you the spirit to have your eyes awake so you won't be in no slumber but you won't be missing out what they're saying. She won't turn a, a deaf ear to when he say he's pipping his people for some money. Again, Leviticus 18, chapter 30. Therefore shall you keep my ordinance that you commit not any of these abominable customs which were committed before you and that you defile not yourself therein. I am a higher shah a higher. Keep his ordinances. When you're looking at this land, the spirit of Egypt, this nation, again, you can see it. It's manifested out in front of you. If you're a 501c3 church, that means you're in bed. You're a government agency, and you have the spirit of this Egypt running around in your pews, in your microphone systems, in your refrigerator, in your communion baskets, in your collection plates. It's the spirit running around all through it. There's no getting around it. It's which you filed yourself therein with it. Now, looking at the word. Again, we could look at all these different spirits, a proud in spirits, Ecclesiastes 7 and 8, thinking you know more than Ahia, thinking you know more than Yeshia, saying your thoughts are equal to their thoughts. Your ways are the same as their ways. They're not. Any man teaching that is a lie, so fraud is untrue, sad spirit, moping around. You see that in First Kings, verse. Um, excuse me, First Kings chapter twenty-one, verse five. A jealous spirit, making you envious, making you wanting. Jealous spirit, Numbers chapter five, verse fourteen, verse thirty. A lying spirit. Don't know everything that comes from the word. Don't know everything from the truth. So you just twist it up. Give them a little lie. Lead them astray. First Kings chapter twenty two. Verse twenty two. Spirit of bondage. 
we still in the house of bondage. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Evil spirit, judges. A spirit of whoredom. Hosea chapter 5, verse 4. You can't turn on the TV without not seeing the spirit of whoredom. And that spirit again is alive. Leading men and women to strip clubs, poles, saints, making it rain, flocking to Vegas, flocking to San Francisco, so they be partakers of the spirit that leads them to abomination, so they can leave a Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the spirit. Of whoredom. Now, all these different spirits, I think I may continue with this on another day because we really need to recognize and identify the spirits that control us, the spirits that are controlling loved ones, even myself. You get to listen to this, and today is July 16, 2015, on this Gregorian calendar. But as the sun goes down tonight, my plan is to fast and to pray, because I have a spirit upon me that wants me to consume all sorts of stuff that's not good for this temple. So I'm going to pray, and I'm going to study. I'm going to ask Ahaya for his guidance. I'm going to ask Yeshaya to lead my walk and my steps and order my thoughts so I can get that spirit that's inside of me out so I can get my temple as healthy as it needs to be for the upcoming battle, the upcoming fight, the upcoming teaching. Now we want to learn how to deal with spirit. And again, I only showed you some of the spirits. We could go on for another two hours in the Word just to recognize spirits. And and before I move on, dealing with the spirits, learning how to have these things in your life so they can become positive, you got to understand these spirits are upon Israel, the house of Jacob, all 12 tribes, the ones that are in bondage and are captivity until the Most High come gets us. The spirits are in your loved ones, your family, your friends, your neighbors. The spirits are in this nation affecting your TV, computer, your internet, your food. You've got to recognize these spirits and learn how to deal with them in righteousness so we can overcome. So the first scripture we're going to go to, to learn how to deal with these spirits, learn how we can live in righteousness, is First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So again, I look at this time that we're in right now as a preparation day. That we're in a date for our Father and His kingdom. And the next day that we'll have will be that Sabbath day, a thousand years. Well, we keep saying shalom. You'll have peace. But he's in the latter times. And I think we're in the sixth day. I can't tell you if we're in day 200, 500, 800, 900. I just think we're in the latter days. And I'll be the sixth day. Man, we see people departing from the faith and they give heed to seducing spirits. This, this, land are we in, 
nothing but seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You can't turn on your TV. If you turn it on tonight, you find a doctrine of a devil going on. Verse number two, speaking of lies and hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Three, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath prayed to receive the thanksgiving to them which believe. Know the truth. Thy word is true. The sight is the way, the truth, and the life. His law is truth. 119, 1 and 42. Abstain from meats. Again, go back to the word and see what the Father gave you for meats. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. For every creature of a higher is good and nothing to be refused if it received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of a higher in prayer. So it's sanctified. Do you have to eat and whatever you need to eat? Go back to Leviticus chapter 11. If you go to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44, it tells you that Ahiah has sanctified all those things for you to eat, Israel, while you're trying to wake yourself up. Paul tells you what has been sanctified. Leviticus 11, 44. Leviticus 11, chapter... Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44, tells you the word sanctify those things. Can't be any more clear than that. But we're going to go on. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. If thou put thy brethren in remembrance of these things, thou should be a good minister of Christ, nourished up in the words of faith, in a good doctrine, where thou hast attained, use, profane, old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather to godliness for bodily exercise profileth little but godliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come so don't believe old wise fables put these things in the law in your remembrance what does he tell you about the Sabbath day? The only commandment he tells you to remember. Evidently, we were going to forget it. The Most High is smarter than us. His thoughts are higher than ours. His ways are different from ours. He told you to put these things, good doctrine, into remembrance. Put good doctrine into remembrance so you can be a minister of Christ. Tells you to remember the Sabbath day. The world, this nation, America that you live in, the Christians, about 95% of them tell you to forget the Sabbath day altogether. So don't believe those fables, don't believe those lies. Number nine. Verse number nine, First Timothy four. This is faithful saying and worthy of all exception. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living, trust in the living Ahia, who is a savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no Man despise thy youth, but thou an example of believers in the word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, purity. Command and teach these things. Let no man despise the youth. Charity, another word for love. You know you love him if you keep his commandments in spirit. You know the commandments you need to have the spirit inside of you. Faith, keeping yourself clean. Faith, give all diligence to add to your faith. We're in verse number 13. So I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Until the Most High come, 
Because, again, this is what we're talking about, what's happening in the latter days. Remember, that's where we start off. Until he comes, give attendance to what? Reading. Why should you do that? The shyest custom was going to the synagogue on the Sabbath day into what? Read, to exhort, to give doctrine. So, here, this is a question to my brothers in Israel. My brothers who say they're keeping the commandments. Do you give good attendance to reading every Sabbath day? To exhort, to give good doctrine, to lay hands, right? We read earlier, what did Yeshua do to cast out that unclean spirit? He laid hands. You must come together to grow that olive tree, to grow that spirit. Verse number 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on the hands of the prebester. Excuse me for butchering that word. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that they are profiting and may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So don't neglect these things. Lay hands. We're talking about being in the spirit, learning how to identify the spirit and and walking in the spirit. What do we hear so far? Prayer, fasting, laying hands, reading, daily to exhort. To stay in good doctrine. These are the things that cultivate the spirit. To keep you in the spirit. Now, we have 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Laboring in our Father's word. Praying that we one day will find ourselves worthy. That we are teaching Ready, good doctrine. First Corinthians chapter twelve, and here, one of the spirits we seen or I, I read earlier was the spirit of jealousy. You should understand why you shouldn't have the spirit of jealousy. And we should also understand from this scripture that we're about to read in First Corinthians twelve why we need to come together. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ignorant being a lack of knowledge, not knowing the will of the Most High. Remember, at some point you've got to stop being a servant and you'll be his friend. Because a friend knows exactly what he's going to do. If you're a servant, you don't know what the master's going to do. If someone's got to spoon feed you this word, They're trying to keep you as a servant. But the most high, Ahia, Yeshia, would not keep you ignorant. He will lead you into all truth. He will be your friend so you will know. Again, chapter 12, verse 1, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. He know that ye were Gentiles. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. But we know for a fact that Israel was carried away to Babylon. We see that in Jeremiah. We know that they were carried away. They had idolatry. They did Christmas. They did Queen of Heaven. You know that you were Gentiles. How are they Gentiles? Again, we're talking about right here spiritual gifts. This whole thing right here we're going to talk about is about being in spirit. 
there will always be Israel according to the flesh. Right here, he's pointing out Israel be a Gentiles by the Spirit. And what did he say? Being dumb. We got right now to this day. Just listen to this lesson. We have brothers and sisters that Israel, according to the flesh, that will call themselves Gentiles, and they still dumb. They still have that spirit of ignorance on them. If I just stop right here, that's the first two lines of Corinthians 12. But you'll have those going around telling you throughout the word. Every time you see the word Gentile, it's talking about Israel. Or 90% of the time, it's Israel. The Father wouldn't keep you ignorant. He tells you clearly what he's talking about here. Keep reading and understand we're talking about the Spirit here. And what does the Spirit do? It manifests itself. We can see Israel right now, today. That spirit of dumbness has manifested themselves, and they call themselves what? Gentile. And we can say to themselves over and over again, you not no Gentile. I hope I have enough time to finish everything I'm talking about in this lesson. I know me and my brother, we're going to talk about uh, Micah. Um, one the part of Micah, they talk about there that his name is going to be magnified amongst the Gentiles. That's Micah chapter 1. And I was talking to a brother that called himself Israel. And he was telling me that's why they could say the name of Jesus, because, you know, their name is going to be magnified amongst Gentiles. And, again, I understand it. I'm, I'm really not stressing on it too much. My biggest point, though, is my biggest point is if you're Israel, why would you consider yourself a Gentile? That's of another nation. So if I'm Israel and I know that I'm Israel, that I was lied to for generations, I was lied to for times, and they called me a Gentile, and I know I'm not a Gentile no more, I ain't going to keep some of the heathen ways and traditions. I tell you, Yeshua is the same way we started off in the beginning of this lesson. Why? Why do we say the name? Because we know what it means. We know that he's going to be our Savior. We say, Ahaya, Shah, Ahaya not because we want to be sound and great or be flamboyant, be different. I don't have no problem if you go around saying, I am that I am. I be who I be. We just say it in English. We just, we're just showing our humility to the Most High and to the Father. That's all we're doing by saying that and keeping his name because that's what he wanted us to do. So again, to this day, we have Israel, according to the flesh, and believe they're Gentiles and are dumb and worship idols, the um, Roman Catholic churches. We're in number three. Wherefore, I give you to understanding that no man speaking by the spirit of a highest calleth Yeshia accuse you. Again, read again. Wherefore I give to you understand that no man is speaking to the spirit of a higher call of Yeshai accused, and that no man can say that Yeshai is the Lord but the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. We only want we only want one baptism, we only want one faith. But there's a diversity of gifts amongst the spirit of Israel, amongst the spirit that he's given to the world. And there are differences of admin, administration, but of the same Lord. So his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are different from our ways. So he administered the spirit to this nation. He spirit, administered the spirit to Israel in all different ways. Some of my brothers got the gift of gab. Some can make you laugh. Some can make you sing. Some can make you cry. All those different spirits that the Most High give you are only supposed to be used what to help build His kingdom up. If I'm considered too dull, and I have another brother that have a zeal, and he can make you 
brighten up by hearing the world. You use that that spirit that he's giving you, that gift, that diversity to help keep teaching the nation to bring us out of our slumber. But it only comes from Ahaya. There's only one Ahaya. Verse number six, and there are diversities of operation, the same Ahaya, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. As I was saying over and over again, when Yeshua comes back as a Spirit, it will be manifested from all mankind. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Everybody will see him. That Spirit will be manifested within the whole earth. The Spirit walks, talks, breathes, gives life. The Spirit will make these old corrupted bodies that we have better, bigger, brighter, newer. The Spirit will. It's a manifestation. You'll be able to see the Spirit. We should be able to see the way our brothers and sisters walking and living and conducting themselves. Number eight, verse number eight, for to one is given by the spirit of the word of wisdom to another world of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gift of healing by the same spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. For all these worketh that one in the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. As he will. Just like he said, Joe, who are you? Were you around when I created all these things? Who are we to try to discern our dividing of the spirit? Who are we to act like we? Know all his thoughts and his ways. Who are we to say that I taught you something? You ain't teach us nothing. No man has taught us nothing. Me and Brother D, the only thing we are doing is prophesying to this wind. Now, Haya decided to give us wisdom in some things, give us knowledge in some things. By all glory be to him, all glory be to the son, all glory be to our brother, all glory be to Abba, our father, and we say the same thing they would say. No more, no less. Deuteronomy 4, 2, don't add to the word, don't take away from the word. All the plagues will be added to you. All your righteousness, your inheritance will be taken away. So, watch out from these spirits of people, haughty spirits that claim things they can't claim, boast about things they shouldn't boast. Verse number 12, 1 Corinthians 12, verse number 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For the one spirit as well, excuse me, I'll start again. Verse number 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we be all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. But thy foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is that therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, and I am not of the body, is therefore not of the body? If the holy body were an eye, and were the hearing, if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now have God sent members, every one of them, in the body, as he hath pleased him. They were all one member. Where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but 
one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. But understand this. Get this knowledge of this. We suffer from disease, diabetes. They'll chop off a hand, a finger, a foot, an arm, and toe, and a heartbeat and say you have no need for it. We are one body. That's a manifestation. That's a manifestation of the word to show you the perfectness of that body and how we need everything else so we can be a righteous bind. Verse number 22, nay, much more of these members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. They are uncommonly parts have more abundant consciousness. For our comely parts have no need, but a high have tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lack it. Be no schism in the body, but the members should have the same care for one another. So there could be no schism in the body, and again, we're talking about the spirit and having the spirit grow and be able to see the spirit because you have to have care for the body. You know, if we black, get a little ashy, put some jerkins on, some lotion, make sure that skin stay oily sometime. My Hispanic brothers got the long hair. They take care of their hair, tie it up, put it up take care of their skin, we take care of our beards. The women, they do the same thing. We take care. Why is that important? How can you take care of your brothers and sisters if the only way you worship and meet them and see them is on a telephone line? How can you take care of your members if the only time that you do or any time you give tithes or um, collection is sent back to some other just say, I'm taking care of my brothers and sisters that's out here in um, Northern California by sending all my money to a brother in Southern California. How's that taking care of the member? How's that taking care of the body? Understand, it's a spirit of dumbness. It's a spirit of slumber. Care of one another. Verse 25, we're picking up at verse 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. If one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Again, if we're not taking care of our body and I let an affection run rampant in my hand, the rest of my body can suffer. If I call myself a child of Israel, if I call myself a member of this faith and I can see the other members of Israel out here suffering and I do nothing about it, am I bringing honor to it or shame? Verse number 27, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And Ahia has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and the gifts of healing, health government, diversity, tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Question. Are all teachers? Question. Are all workers of miracles? Question. Have you all the gifts of healing? Do you all speak tongues? Do you all interpret but covet earnestly the best gifts and yet show unto you a more? We must come together. We must worship on the Sabbath together. We must, if somebody can speak tongues, got to help us all speak Hebrew together. If somebody can interpret the scriptures, got to help us all interpret the scriptures together. We all have these gifts. If somebody is good with herbs and healing, we come together so we can all earn the herbs and healing. But what was, what was freely received should be freely given. I can't pimp you out for this stuff because the Father gave me some gifts. 
That's a sin. That's a spirit that's in you working for profit. See in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Starting at verse 6. Now, with eye service, as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of a higher from the heart. Start off with children, obey your parents, for this is the one commandment with a promise. And now we have verse 7. With good will doing service as the Lord and not to men. So you're doing a good service to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing that man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. So whatever good thing you do it, you shall receive. Now, if you look at Matthew 25, what does it say? Matthew 25. If you saw the Most High in in jail. He saw the Most High starving. He saw the Most High lacking clothing. Would you help him? So we in verse 31, Matthew 25. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all his holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Again, we're talking about the last day. This is going to come, our angel will sing, and he'll be sitting on his throne all his glory. And before him shall gather all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set a sheep on his right hand and his goats on his left. Then he shall say, King, say unto them, on his right hand, come ye blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom. Prepare for you from the foundation of the world. You're going to inherit the kingdom will prepare for you before the sun was even made. For I was, verse number 35, for I was hungry, and you gave me meat. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was a stranger, again, a different name, a stranger. When I was a stranger, you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw ye thee as hungry, or fed thee, or thirsty? When we saw thee a stranger, and took thee in, naked, and clothed thee. Or when we saw thee sick, or in prison, came unto thee. And the king, Yeshua is your king, and the king should answer and say unto them, Verily, that means truly, truly, I say unto you, and as much as you have done it unto one and the least of these brethren, you have done it unto me. And then some will go into everlasting punishment, and some will go into eternal life because the things that we do to our brothers and sisters we're not willing to do to your child. That's the spirit we're talking about. That's the spirit that you should be walking in. Going back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 8, knowing whatever good thing any man doeth, the same he's received from the Lord. So if you're willing to do these things, the highest is going to give these things back to you. How can you do that if you don't spend no time with your brothers and sisters? How can you flee them, clothe them, keep them out of prison? How can you take care of them if you never see them, if we won't lay hands on each other? Number nine, Ephesians number six, verse nine, and ye master do the same thing unto their forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect to persons with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of a higher that you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, palities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual weaknesses, wickedness in high places. We 
skin, we can see a nation being wicked. Wicked. We can see the laws being wicked. That the Prince of Charles sits behind all these nations. Wherefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. We know Romans chapter 7, for the law is spiritual, but I am carnal and sold under sin. So Paul wrote in Romans chapter 7, verse 14. But we don't look at the law as spiritual. We look at it as a checklist of do's and don'ts. The law is truth. It's alive. It's breathing. It's manifested in you. It's what you can see. You should be able to touch the law. The same way Thomas touched your shine. Spiritual. It's a manifestation. All right. I don't think I'll be able to get it through all of it, but I'm going to go to John 14, verses 12 through 21. And this is what dealing with the spirits. The last one we had was just walking in the spirit. And that was a little bit shorter. We're going to go to, um, again, we'll probably touch some of this um, tomorrow, or excuse me, on the Sabbath day at 10 o'clock to be um, Brother V giving out a lesson, and I'll be helping my brother. We'll be going with Malachi 4. One of the things that we're going to talk about is Elijah and the spirit of Elijah, but I was going to close out with that uh, verse in Second Kings um, chapter 2. I was probably going to read 1 and 2, but Kings chapter 2, when he's talking about the spirit of Elijah and all the gifts that he had and the way he lived his life. So we're going to look about that, about the spirit of Elijah. That's one of the things I was going to use for walking in the spirit. But learning how to deal with the spirit, staying in the spirit is where we're at right now. And this is the last verse I have on it. Probably close out with this one. And next time I'll talk to my brothers and sisters and anybody who listen to this will be on our Sabbath day. But here we go. John chapter 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. So if you believe in Yeshua and his works that he's done, so he kept the Sabbath day, you'll keep the Sabbath day. He kept Passover, you keep Passover. He kept days of unleavened bread, you keep days of unleavened bread. He kept first fruits, you keep first fruits, so on and so forth. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you believe, excuse me, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray. Hey, that's pretty cool. We need to pray, Yeshua. Here, it tells you, pray. If you love me, keep my commandments, verse number 15. Number 16, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but ye know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you, and I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Verse number 19. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will also. You will live also. At that day, you will know that I am my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and he will love me and manifest myself to him. I will manifest myself to him. Keeping these commandments, the spirit, the ruach, 
Josiah should be dwelling in you, and you should be able to see my brother. He will come in great glory, great, great glory on that last day before he starts our Sabbath day with us. But you should be able to see him and those that keep the commandments. So let me ask you something. Let me, let me check this out. If you never see a brother and or a sister, he can never test their fruits. They're never around you. You can never lay hands on them. How do you know what's abiding in them? How do you know what's within them? Why did he adorn or ordain us to make elders in our own communities where we live so we wouldn't be caught unaware that he will be able to dwell in us so we can see the spirit in us, the spirit alive. Because I live, you will also live. You do not leave us unaware. Again, back at number 15, if you love me and keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. He already sent us our helper. And he may abide with you forever. That spirit should be inside you as we speak right now. The spirit of truth. Who the world cannot receive. It's plainly to see that the world cannot see that sodomite, sodomy is an abomination. If every man and woman became gay on this planet, there will be no more life on this planet. That's an abomination. Ahaya Ashar Ahaya gave the blueprint for life to Yeshaya. Sent him here to what this place we call a galaxy. And with the words of the Father, his spirit went over the whole globe of this earth. He breathed it into us, every man, woman, and child. We became living beings. We became souls. You must, absolutely must, look to live in the spirit and keep these commandments. Second Kings, chapter 2. Talk about Elijah. Again, we'll see in the last days before the preparation, before he comes back, will be two prophets. And again, I understand that we are a witness for the Most High, but it will be two. Just like um, Elijah was able to rain fire from the heavens and burn 50 soldiers up, another 50 soldiers up, Next one that came to Elijah bent the knee, bowed down, so he wouldn't get burned up. Gave reverence to the Creator. Elijah taken up in a whirlwind. Elijah asked for that double spirit to be placed upon him by the Jordan River. The spirit was so strong in him that he was able to part the sea. But what did he say when he's looking at that chapter? He started off with prayer. Enoch, before he was translated, stayed in prayer. Stayed in prayer so long, talking to the Most High, didn't talk to others. He, he had to have a life at some point, a prayer and fast. <laughs> prayer and fasting. So I urge my brothers and sisters to pray, to fast, stay diligent to this word, recognize these spirits that are among us. This show is about the end. For anybody to listen, thank you. Shalom. Let's keep the commandments. Reach out to one another and keep this body. Keep his faith. Peace, Israel.
Good night.